unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks. Oh, oh give thanks unto the Lord, unto the Lord for he is good. For he is good. Oh, yes. yes he is good. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the unto Lord. The God is good. Good morning on this beautiful Sunday morning. Welcome to the church by the side of the road. Will you please bow your heads as we join together as one body to pray. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that we could come as one body to glorify and to magnify and honor your name the name above all other names, and that is the name of Jesus. We come to worship you in spirit and truth on this morning. It says in Psalm 150, Praise ye the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the ferment of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts, and praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet, and praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the tremble and with dance, and praise him with the stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals, and praise him with the high-sounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath, let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen? Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we magnify the Lord on this morning. The Lord is high above the heavens and his mercy above, the, his glory above the nations. Hallelujah. Join in praise and worship with us. Hallelujah. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory above the nations. And his glory above the nations. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And he's worthy to be praised. And he's worthy to Come be praised. Come on and give God praise acknowledge him in your ways and all of god's people say halle halle hallelujah halle 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 the lord is high above the heavens the lord is high above the heavens and his glory above the nations and his glory above the nations the lord is High above the heavens, and he's worthy to be praised. And he's worthy to Come be praised. Come on and give God your highest praise. Acknowledge him in your ways, and all of God's people say, Halle, Halle, Hallelujah! Halle, 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 Halle,
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get, good morning, church. Good morning, church, by the side of the road. To our entire church family, our regular attendees, our members, and our new extended digital family, we greet you with a hearty God bless you, a holy amen. Happy Mother's Day to mothers near and far. To all of us whose mothers have gone on to be with the Lord, we, 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 we bless you even now. Amen. Welcome to Church by the Side of the Road. We're just a family of believers drawing others to Christ through his word and our example. Feel free on this digital platform to join in the song, join in the praise, join in the prayer. You can submit your prayer request via the little comment section. You can hit us up at our website, www.cbsr.org. You can even leave a voicemail. We're praying with you. We're praying for you. Our ministers and staff are watching and monitoring. We're, we're going to stand in the gap and call your name before the Lord. Amen. And don't forget, even after today's service, communion, Holy Communion will be served in a drive-up fashion from 1230 to 130. So let's hear what God has for us. Let's be blessed and let's worship him. You can worship him wherever you are. God can hear you right here, right now. Consecrate yourself. Get up, get dressed and lift up your hands. Lift up your voice. Let us magnify the Lord as we exalt his name together. Coming now with our Holy scripture reading in Joshua chapter 14 is Sister Denise Hansel. I'll be reading from Joshua 14, 16 through 8, 15 NIV version. Now the people of Judah approached Joshua at Gilgal and Caleb son of Jephunneh the Kezanite said to him, you know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, at Kadesh Barnea about you and me? I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land. Uh -huh. And I brought him back a report according to my convictions. But my fellow Israelites who went up with me made the hearts of the people melt in fear. I, however, follow the Lord my God wholeheartedly. So now on that day Moses swore to me, the land on which your feet have walked will be your inheritance and that of your children forever because you have followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. Now then, just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive for 45 years since the time he said this to Moses while Israel moved about in the wilderness. So here I am today, 85 years old. All right. I am still as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. I'm just as vigorous to go out to battle now as I was then. Now give me this hill country that the Lord promised me that day. You yourself heard then that the Anakites were there and their cities were large and fortified. But the Lord helping me, I will drive them out just as he said. Then Joshua blessed Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and gave him Hebron as his inheritance. So Hebron has belonged to Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kezanite, ever since, because he followed the Lord, the God of Israel, wholeheartedly. Hebron used to be called Kirath Arba, after Arba, who was the greatest man among the Anakites. Then the land had rest from war. Amen. Here ends the reading of God's word. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are our strength, strength like no other. And your strength reaches to us, and we declare it this morning. Hallelujah. You are my strength like no other. Strength like no other. It reaches. Just to 
is our strength, a very present help in a time of trouble. And I'm grateful to God that we have a God we can turn to. He said, call on me and I'll answer and show you great and unsearchable things. And this time, Deacon Brother Henry is going to lead us in prayer. And again, we receive every prayer request submitted. And our elders, our ministers, our, our team is praying with you and for you. Trust and know that the saints of God are calling your name, your concerns before the Most High. So join in us, join with us in prayer. Come on, Deacon Brother Henry. Good morning, church. Um, please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Almighty God and Father, we're just ever so grateful that we're in your house, Almighty God and Father, and you've provided this house for us, Lord God and Heavenly King. We just glorify your holy name. You are omnipotent, Lord God and Heavenly King. You're all-powerful, omniscient, all-knowing, and ever-present God. So yeah. we just feel your presence here today, Lord. And we just pray that we would have a spirit of expectancy that you would make things move, Lord, that we would grow in our faith. So we just glorify you, Lord. Praise to you, Almighty God and Father. And, and Lord, we come before you, Lord, and we know that we are not worthy, Lord. We just but we go down to our knees, Lord, and pray for forgiveness, Lord, because we just uh, confess to you that we are sinners, Lord. And we're ever so thankful we have a Savior who died on the cross to save us from our sins, Lord. You sacrifice your only son to shed his blood on the cross, Lord, to wash away our sins and redeem all our sins, Almighty God and Father. So, Lord, we come before you, Lord, and again, we're ever so thankful, Lord, for Thessalonians 5, 16, 17, and 18. Be joyful always. Pray continuously. Give thanks in all circumstances, Lord. And we, and we will uh, pray for God's will for you, Almighty God and Father. So, Lord, uh, there's many uh, prayer requests, Almighty God and Father. Uh, Lord, but on this Mother's Day, Lord, I just want to uh, just uh, pray for our moms, Almighty God and Father, yeah. and pray for their blessings, uh, Almighty God and Father, on this day, Lord. Uh, we just pray for all the ladies out there, Almighty God and Father, who have sons and daughters nieces, nephews, friends. Lord, we pray for those that are uh, pregnant, Almighty God and Father, right now. We just pray for healthy deliveries, Lord God and Heavenly King. We pray for healing, uh, for uh, deliveries that could be complicated, Lord. We pray for those uh, that are trying to get pregnant, Lord, that uh, you would just, uh, in your will, Almighty God and Father, uh, provide miracles uh, for these uh, young ladies and young men uh, that are together, Lord. We just uh, pray for relationships, Lord, uh, that uh, many moms are in. There's some uh, folks that are ju just hurting right now, Lord. Yeah. And so, Lord, we just uh, pray for intervention there, Almighty God and Father. We just pray for uh, the, the moms that they would be confident to come before you, Almighty God and Father. So, Lord, again, we just pray for a blessing for our moms who have been there for a shoulder to cry on, Lord God and Heavenly King, for an ear to hear all of our complaints, Lord God and Heavenly King. They're just, there's just infinite things that our moms have done for us, Lord. So we just uh, pray for their blessings, Lord. Uh, Lord, we uh, pray for winter. Uh, who has a COVID virus and it, uh, is at home, Lord. We just pray for uh, healing there. For Denise Olson and her family, Lord, we pray for comfort. Uh, her mom passed away on Thursday. Uh, we pray for Jerry Foster, who is recovering from heart surgery, Lord, and currently has double pneumonia. We pray for guidance for the medical staff, Lord God and Heavenly King, uh, that they would uh, treat him. Uh, provide the wisdom and knowledge uh, that they can uh, treat him, Lord God. We pray for Jimmy Corbin. Uh, we pray for healing from pain. 
Lord God, uh, for Curtis Ruffin, Lord. Uh, we pray for his state of health, Lord. We pray for healing there. For Charles Simpson, a uh, prayer to do uh, to loss of a close family friend. And we pray for many uh, folks that have lost loved ones, Lord. We pray for comfort at this time, Lord. It's always difficult to lose a loved one. Uh, for Anna Samuel, Lord. Uh, she uh, needs healing prayers as well, Lord. So we, we pray for Anna, Lord God, and Heavenly King. We pray for Tammy Howard. Her uncle passed away, and uh, we pray for comfort there. Uh, for an upcoming surgery, uh, we uh, just pray uh, for just a calming of her heart, Lord, as she pre pre prepares to go in for surgery, Lord. Uh, we just uh, pray to uh, just calm uh, her anxiety. We pray for Juanita Sanders. Uh, Terrence uh, passed away uh, on April 24th. This is a nephew to Juanita Sanders, Lord. So we pray for the son, Nevin, and their family. We pray for their comfort. Lord, we, uh, we just pray for all the uh, first responders right now that are uh, uh, just uh, working uh, uh, towards helping people with the uh, coronavirus, Lord God and Heavenly King. Our uh, medical folks, uh, our uh, fire uh, responders, Lord, our military, uh, Lord. Uh, we just pray for all the folks that are there on the front lines, Lord. We pray for their safety and protection, Lord, as uh, they're putting their lives on the line every day. We pray for the folks that do have this virus. And actually, Lord, for all illnesses, Lord, we just uh, pray for healing there, Almighty God and Father. We again pray for the uh, all the uh, medical folks, Lord. We pray for their guidance and direction. They need you, Lord. Uh, they do need... Uh, their, uh, your knowledge and wisdom uh, to provide them with the knowledge to provide care to these folks, Almighty God and Father. And Lord, we pray for our pastor, Lord. Uh, we just uh, pray uh, for anointing uh, for him, Almighty God and Father, from the Holy Spirit, that he would bring your word, God's word, uh, the gospel uh, to the folks here, Lord. And again, Lord, we're just ever so uh, grateful uh, that you're here in this house, Almighty God and Father, uh, that we're able to do it, uh, whether it's in person or on, online or whatever it is, Lord. If it's out on the streets, you provide it for us, Almighty God and Father. God will provide. And we just praise you in your glory today and each and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let us continue in this hour of worship by honoring Jesus Christ with the giving of our tithes and offerings, which in, of course includes our capital campaign offerings, because Jesus, he's worthy of it all. For your convenience, we have provided three options to give. The first option to give online at www.cbsr.org. The second option, you can also give through your mobile device or your iPad using the cash app code name dollar sign CBSR2. The third option, you can make your checks out to the church by the side of the road and then mail it to P.O. Box 68545 Tequila, Washington 98168. During this crucial time, it's important that we be found faithful. And as a church, we want to thank you for your faithfulness because we know that when we are joined together in commitment to advance the kingdom, our God is pleased. In your homes, will you join with us with the lifting up of your tithes and your offerings right now? So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we lift up and we present to you the tithes and the offerings. And we consecrate it, recognizing that you've already provided sovereignly for us. So we give you the best of the best, the first fruits to bless you and your house and your kingdom, because it's for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. We have a few important announcements this morning. First of all, as Pastor mentioned earlier, we are having drive through communion today, so we invite you to come and participate. That'll be from 12.30 to 1.30 in our parking lot. And we will also be giving out Mother's Day gifts in honor of Mother's Day. 
Amen. We invite you to watch on Wednesday from 6.30 to 7.30 as Pastor Proctor facilitates a discussion on COVID-19 and your finances with guest Al Galisic. You will have an opportunity to send your questions live on Facebook or you can email them in advance to office at cbsr.org and we encourage you to do that. So tune in 6.30 this Wednesday. If you or your child are graduating from high school or college this year, we'd like to know about it. So if you could send us the graduate's name, school name, and any degree achieved by May 31st, we'll be sure to include them when we honor graduates. And once again, we just want to wish all the mothers a very happy Mother's Day. And God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. We honor you, O oh God. We magnify you and we glorify you. We want to praise your name all the more. The song says, we love to praise your name. I love to lift you up. We bless your name, sweet Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I love to praise your name. Jesus, 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 I love to praise your name. I love to lift you up. We bless, we bless your holy name. Sweet Jesus, 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 Jesus. <laughs> Sweet Jesus, 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 I love to praise your name. I love to lift you up. We bless your name. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, 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 Jesus.
Jesus, uh, the more I call him, that's the better I feel. The more I call him, that's the better I feel. The more I call him, that's the better I feel. The better I feel, the better I feel. The better I feel, the better I feel. The better I feel, the better I feel. The better I feel. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. One more time. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. There's no other name on the heaven whereby men shall be saved. Oh, something about that name, Jesus. It's the sweetest name I know. The Word of God found again in Joshua 14. Happy Mother's Day to each and every one of you. To my mother and mother-in-law and grandmothers, all are in heaven. We coming, we coming, we gonna get it right, but mama, we love you, we thank God for each and every one of you. To those of you who are grieving your mothers, God bless you, God be with you, we still celebrate Mother's Day. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Deacon Brother Henry, for leading us in prayer, and to our worship team who who, who are here leading us in worship, and to all of our, our stand-in worship leaders throughout the weeks during this COVID uh, shut-in. We thank God for each and every one of you, uh, Brother JB and, and Brother Palmer and Brother, all of you. God, Brother Bass, good to see you. Twin, good to see you. Everybody, good to see you. It's preaching time. There's a word from the Lord. Are y'all praying? All right, test your emoji game. Somebody uh, type a hallelujah, praise, whatever the emoji in Jesus' name. Get your heart ready. God has a word, and I pray that uh, he consecrates me to be a good steward of what he's prepared for his people. The book of Joshua, chapter 14. Thank you, Sister Denise, for reading and uh, hearing. And the English Standard Version reads it like this. Then the people of Judah <clears throat> came to Joshua of Gilead. And Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, a Kizanite, said unto him, You know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, at Kadesh Barnea concerning me. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of God, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I brought him word again as it was in my heart. Verse 8. But my brothers who went up with me made the heart of the people melt. Yet I wholly followed the Lord my God. And Moses swore on that day, Surely the land which your foot has trodden shall be an inheritance for you and your children forever. Because you, watch this, have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive, just as he said. For four, these 45 years since that time that the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, behold, I am this day 85 years old. And I'm still strong today as I was that day when Moses sent me. My strength is now as my strength was then for war, for going and coming. Some now, so now give me this hill country which the Lord spoke on that day, for you heard it on that day how the Anamak, excuse me, Anakim were there and with great fortified cities. It may be that the Lord will be with me and I will drive them out as the Lord said. Verse 13, and Joshua blessed him and gave him Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, as a inheritance. Here ends the reason of God's word. The people shall call it blessed father God. You've said a mouthful. Speak to us. Speak through us. Rightly divided. Parcel. Put genetically spiritual nutrition in each word that it bring forth life, liberty, power, that it open our eyes, that it set blaze to our heart. Touch us, keep us, move like only you move. Let your word not return unto you void. Let it accomplish your intended purpose. In Jesus' name, all the people said, amen. It's preaching time. The sermon of the subject is this mountain. This mountain. Say it in the, in the ether sphere. This mountain. This mountain. 
Here it is in Joshua. I know the Old Testament can be a little clumsy for some of us who are not uh, regular Bible readers, but throughout the history of God's people's mountain shows up in their stories. Amen? It's something about mountains. They, they speak of obstacles. And even sometimes they speak of promise. When Israel had been in Egypt for 400 years, the first request was, Pharaoh, let us go to the mountain for three days that we might worship. Then he said, let us go to the mountain for 30 days that we might worship. Then he said, you know what? We out of here. And they went to the mountain. Mountains can be obstacles and or blessings. Say it with me. Mountains can be obstacles or blessings. I thank each and every one of you who are watching on the internet, and yes, I want you here, but you can't come here. Only people in here is the staff and the production team. And, and, but, but you can type mountains right where you are. And we all have mountains. Come on, somebody. But I think the word of the Lord is, is revealing something that sometimes we misinterpret the mountains we face. Something about mountains. The songwriter said, Lord, if you don't move my mountains, would you just give me strength to cry? In the Bible, he said, if you got faith of a mustard seed, you can speak to the mountain, be thy removed. How do you know which mountain remove and which mountain God has promised you? I pray that God gives us discernment. You know, mountains are all throughout the Bible. Mount Ararat in Genesis 8 is where Noah's ark actually landed. And look what happened. There was a rainbow as a sign while they were stuck on Ararat waiting for the waters to rescind. And it was a promise of God. What did God promise on that mountain? That I'll never destroy the earth with water again. Come on, somebody. Then there's Mount Moriah. Gersium in Genesis 22, where we find what? Abram's sacrifice. Abram, who had waited 90 plus years for the promise of God, was, was called to sacrifice the promise of God. And he goes up to Mount Moriah and he prepares the sacrifice. His baby said, Daddy, I see the altar, I see the wood, but I don't see any sacrifice. The Lord will provide. We come to know Jehovah Jireh on Mount Moriah. Come on, somebody. Mountains. Mount Sinai in the Exodus is where Moses goes up to talk to God, comes back with Ten Commandments, where these wandering ex-slaves receive structure and order from the Most High. You know, God took a nation of slaves to make them a nation of people, holy and acceptable unto God, and he did the purging right at the foot of the mountain. Mount Nebo, come on somebody, after years of wandering, it is here where Moses actually saw the promised land. So Nebo as a mountain shows and, 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 and speaks through antiquity as a viewing point. Oh, let me say it again. Moses brought him out, brought him up that he might see, but he wasn't going to go. And some of the mountains in our face are just viewing points. And what did he actually see? Even though he wasn't going to the promised promised land, he got to see what God promised him. It serves as a reminder that God does keep his promises. Somebody need to know that just today, that our God is a promise keeping God. Can you say amen? amen. Then there's Mount Carmel in the Bible, 1 Kings 18. And this is a scene of great spiritual victory. You remember Elijah? And they were battling Baal. And if your God is all that, Elijah said, we're gone. Maybe he can't hear you. Y'all should shout. Maybe he's in the bathroom. If your God got to go to the bathroom, something wrong with your God. <laughs> and then he built an altar to the Most High. He said, dig a moat, fill it with water, put the wood up there, and wet it. It ain't wet enough. Put some more. Put some more. Put some more. It is there when Elijah proved that our God is the one True God. Do I have a witness? Then there's Hebron and Tabor 
And they are three mountain peaks of the same range. Range. It's the scene for us where Jesus is the Mount of Transfiguration, where the incarnate Christ is revealed in his glory to those that were with him. It was a visual, visual representation of heaven meeting earth, not only at Hebron and Tebron, but in Christ Jesus, the incarnate Christ. He is the visible expression of the invisible God. He is on earth what God is in eternity. At that point, even though those with him got to see him. All mountains are everywhere. Mount all of it. Mount all of it. At the foot of it is Gethsemane. Mount all of it plays a critical part, a pivotal place in the ministry of Jesus Christ. His last days on earth began in Gethsemane in prayer. And after his resurrection, he ascends back to the right hand of the Father, right there in the same spot. I stopped by to tell you, at the foot of the mountain, you're going to see some things. At the foot of the mountain, God will take you some places. Not all mountains need to be moved. I woke up this morning, this is to all my transplants and to all the folk uh, over the nation in, in Brazil and Africa and wherever you're watching us. This is why we live in Seattle. It's crystal clear today. It's supposed to be 87 degrees. And in Seattle, you can see the Olympics and the Cascade. I can see Rainier when I look to the south. I can see Baker and all them other ones. To the, the mountains remind us that God is bigger than us. Do I have a witness? And I stopped by to tell you, this mountain may be a reminder that the biggest mountain in your walk may not be an obstacle in front of you. It may very well be the promise that God has made to you. If so, like Joshua said, grant me this mountain. Can you say this mountain? This. Now watch this. Here it is. The people of God have been brought out, wandered, purged. Only two people survived the exodus. And now they're dividing the promise of God to the tribes of God's people. And I stop by to tell you, just because you have God's promise doesn't mean there won't be problems. Here they're dealing with the logistics of dividing the promise. And, and, and it's good to rely on God, but I stopped by to tell you, God is not going to do everything for you. Some of this, we are going to have to do ourselves. You don't hear me. When God makes a promise to us, he's going to do what only he can do. The question is, can he count on you to do what he called you and me and us to do? The promise of God is ours, but remember, if God put the promise on the top of the mountain, could he trust you to climb? When God has made a promise, he, he, he put in us everything we need to get to where he wants us so he can deliver on what he promised us. So as a people of faith, we have to man up, stand up show up, put in work. Some of us struggle walking in destiny as a delivered people, not because God's not faithful, but maybe we're not faithful. Can I get a witness? We got to put in work. Here it is. Often we want to put in the work that we want to do for the Lord when in fact God has just called us to be faithful to the work he called us to. It's what I call spiritual grit. Some of us older than MTV remember True Grit. It's a movie, it's a western. But grit is defined as the intestinal fortitude to go through adversity without giving up. To get knocked down and get back up. Modern culture has some examples. Rocky wasn't the best fighter, but he got knocked down, but he kept getting back up. Spiritual grit doesn't mean that you have miraculous faith that can believe God for the impossible and you should. It's the grit that says whatever God has already spoken to me, whatever God has already shown me, wherever God has called me, I'm going to stick to it no matter what happens round about me. Do I have a witness? In essence, because God has spoken, I will claim his promises. I will walk into it. I will fight for it. 
You can't have it, devil. You can't steal it. This mountain that God has promised is mine. Y'all still with me? Now, an expositional examination of this particular pericope of scripture, we see that the children of Israel are here at Canaan. The leaders, Eleazar, the priests, Joshua, and the heads of the 12 tribes begin to distribute the land among the tribes. And there's 12 tribes, but it's nine plus two, because the Levites don't get none. Why? Because they're the priestly tribe. Let me stop by and tell you, all of us who are worship leaders, the priestly tribe didn't get the inheritance, not because they were less than, but God designed it because he wanted you to be focused on continuing the doctrines of the faith. We didn't want you to worry about farming, shepherding, or herding. You keep the people of God focused on what God has said. I stop by to tell you, yes, we live in a new dispensation. Yes, we live in the New Testament. But the nation goes off kilter when the people of God are no longer the spiritual moral compass for the conscience of the people because we're preoccupied with stuff and that ain't God's design if my people call by my name humble themselves and pray seek my face who is seeking his face I would apologize for the tangent but I'm sorry I'm not sorry God is calling the people and the hour has come for true worshipers to worship them in spirit and truth. So here it is. You got the 10 tribes divided. They split uh, Joseph's sons in half, Manasseh and Ephraim. And here comes Caleb. In verse six, calling for his inheritance. In Hebrew, the word is nachala. And it means an inalienable right as an inheritance. Now look what he says. 45 years y'all have been wandering. Nobody who came out of Egypt is here except me and you. Caleb is talking to Joshua. And he says, you know what God told Moses about this day. That because when God told us to go spy the land that he would deliver, when everybody else on the recognizant team came back scared, I said wholeheartedly, the land is fruitful, just fertile as, a, as God had said, and we should possess it. But the rest of the recognizance team not only were afraid, but the scripture said they made, watch this, the heart of the people melt. It's one thing when you scare, but your anxiety is contagious and you're dead set to spread it. But God promised me because I wholeheartedly followed him. Now, this isn't a be like Caleb sermon. This is a revelatory of what God is showing us as he's consistent as he moves among his people. Can I show you? First thing, Caleb was confident in God. Here they come out of Egypt and God takes them and sends a recognizant team. And he said, go survey the land. He said, yep, it's grapes big as your head. Houses we didn't build, the land is fertile. Oh, there's some big dudes over there. But if God brought us, God can do it. I got a question. Are you confident in God or is our confidence in a fictitious characterization of who God is? Caleb was confident that the God who called us, the God who brought us, the God who sent us, the God who spoke is able to do whatever he said he would do. My confidence in God is not rooted in some uber charismatic expression of name it and claim it, blab it and crab it. It's about the character of God. I know he's too big to be little, too strong to be weak, too present to be absent, too exact to error, too steadfast to fall, too gracious not to save, and too merciful not to give me another chance. 
Do we believe God like that? His confidence was in God. Our confidence must be in the character of God. Listen, when my confidence is in the character of God, I can believe God for the stuff I can't explain about God. Why? Because I know his character. Come on, somebody. What am I saying? God had already spoken. In the B part of verse 6, it is a reference to a word God had already given him. Since you wholeheartedly trusted God, the foot, the land where you surveyed will be yours. Watch this. Not only now, but your children's children and your children's children and forever. God had already made a promise. Now here's the word. Focus on the promise of God, not the problem. So often we get bogged down with the problem and not the promise. Caleb said God had already spoke and you were there. But watch this. God hadn't forgotten what he told you even if you did. God hadn't got distracted even if you did. God didn't give up on what he promised you even if you did. Caleb was confident. What? Isaiah 55, 11. So shall the word go out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. It will accomplish what that which I purpose, and it shall succeed in the thing in which I sent. Every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God will accomplish whatever God intended. Even if you got to wait on it, the word will speak, and it will not lie. He will do what he said he would do. Somebody say amen. amen. Caleb was confident that what God spoke would in fact come to pass. Let me move on. Not only was he confident, y'all all right? He was consistent. He was consistent. Saints in the internet, whatever it's called, cybersphere, what we struggle with in contemporary Christendom is not that people don't believe. We're just flaky in our faith. We believe one thing, then another, or what we believe about the thing we believe, we don't really believe. We believe in marriage, but divorce is at an all-time high. We believe in raising our children, but we let them run free. We, we believe in having authority, but can't nobody tell them nothing. And that never was more prevalent till you had to teach them during the midst of this COVID. And you about to go crazy with your own children. How do you think we felt at the school? Do we believe what we say we believe? We flaky folk. Matter of fact, even what we say we believe, if it don't show up right away, come on somebody. But look what Caleb said. I waited 45 years for this day. 45 years after God said it. He believed and he waited. Now there are many spiritual gifts and the nature of God's spirit in us generates spiritual fruit. But as disciples of Christ, I discovered that the highest order of discipline is patience. Learning how to wait on the Lord. That's why the psalm writer said, wait I say on the Lord. That's why Isaiah said, and you'll renew your strength if you wait on the Lord. David said, I would have given up waiting had I accepted. I would believe that the Lord, I would see the goodness of the Lord while I was yet in the land of the living. David said, I waited because I know that God would deliver. You're not waiting in naivete. You're not waiting, hoping it turns out. You're waiting, trusting the character of God that no matter how long you wait, no matter what you have to wait through, no matter what you have to wait on, it's going to work for your good, for your growth, and God's glory. But we've got to be consistent. So not only in our faith, but watch this, in our faithfulness. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faithfulness is how we operate in the faith. Meaning, faith is what I believe. Faithfulness is that you can count on me to operate in a way that's consistent with what I say I believe. Not flaky. He kept the faith, and watch this, and the faith he kept 
kept him. I'm going to say it again. Faith he kept, kept him in faithfulness. He had to wait, but he never wavered. He waited under criticism. Remember, he was on the recon team. They conspired to say, Lou, this is too much. But he kept his faith. They waited. He waited under pressure. When everybody else voted one way, he stood his ground on what the Lord says. Under duress, under pressure. 45 years he waited. And I stopped by to tell you, even if you wait 45, 50 years, it's still too soon to give up. 1159 is too soon to give up. You're one second away from the promise of God being actualized in your life. Don't give up now. He waited for the Nahala. The promise of God, the inheritance. Watch this, the inalienable. We see it in our constitution in certain inalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, meaning it was written in the Father's document of this nation that the right of a human being in this nation is, is, is inalienable, it's non-disputable. You don't have to look for a reason for the boys to shoot that boy running in the park. He has a certain right to run wherever he wanted to run, and no matter what you thought he was running from or running to, he has a certain inalienable right as a human being, come here, child of God. You don't have to send me a $50 offering to get a $50 cloth for God to bless you. He's already promised never to leave you. Already promised never to forsake you. Already promised that you would prosper as your soul prosper. That's your right as a believer. Not because you earned it, but because God promised it. Come on, somebody. Don't quit now. God is faithful, so you be faithful. Just like it's always too early to give up, it's never too late to trust God. You can count on him. The question is, can he count on us? Can God count on us to be where he sent us so that we can walk into what he has prepared for us? Come on, somebody. Caleb was consistent. And if nothing else, I pray that God grow us in our consistency. Are you a consistent husband? Are you a consistent wife? Are you a consistent mother, father, son, daughter, uncle, nephew, niece? Can you be counted on, not for what I expect, but can you be counted on on what you said you are? I didn't say Jesus saved you. You said you're saved. I didn't say he called you. You said he called you. I didn't say he filled you with the Holy Ghost. I just read where he said he promised to fill you. You the one said you filled. Does my faith walk reflect my faith? It actually does whether you like it or not. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Some of us got wobbly walk because we got wobbly faith. But I'm not here throwing shots or shade. I'm saying God can grow you from there. Come on, somebody. Also, we see Caleb never cowered. He was consistent, but he couldn't be punked. This is not even in my notes, but I'm going to give this to you for free. I pray that God cultivate us and in us an unpunkable faith. You can't be bullied out of what you believe. Just because it's not popular, just because the trend of social whatever it is is going another way. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul will make her boast in the Lord and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad when they close the church. Some of y'all wouldn't come in no way. And I know there's people that think you crazy for getting up, logging on. Some of you got dressed, got in the shower to go log on. And man, I ain't mad at you because worship for me is a whole religious ritual. I wash, I clean. I, you know what I'm saying? You got to get your whole spirit ready to worship. And I know people think you crazy, but I'd rather be crazy about Jesus than the rest of this crazy. Come on, talk to me, children. He had true grit that would not cower. 
Jesus wouldn't cower after fasting 40 days. And the enemy presented to him some Popeye's biscuits in the form of rocks. If you are who you say you are, you know the ones with the honey on the thing. Man, should I live by bread alone? Some of us cower when we're hungry. Some of us cower in COVID because you ain't had a haircut. You done snuck your way to somebody. Come on. Some of your nails look like eagle claws and you cowering over to. Don't give up. Caleb spied Canaan and when other spies cowered and caused the hearts of people to melt, he would not cower. By verse 12, even now he says, hey, listen, give me this mountain, give me this high place. And yes, there's some boys over there that have already been defeated. I know it's a fortified place, but look at me. I'm 85 now and I'm just as strong as I was then. Why? Because the God who promised it will keep you fit enough to walk into his promise. He said, I'm just as strong today as I was then. And if when I get to where God promised, promised me there's some stuff in the way the God who promised me has strengthened me to deal with it the promise of God is not a vacation spot it's a destiny see we think it's a vacation spot for us to go sit in a hammock and relax no it's a destiny a high ground a higher place that God is bringing you up to but you still got to get there and work Come on, somebody. And he said, here I am, 85, just as strong as I was when I was 40. And if I need to wrestle, if I need to war, the God that was with me, he's still with me. Here's the question. When he says an unpunkable faith that would not cower, what do you say when you see what you see? I'm going to say it again. When God brings you to a Nebo place, you're not in the promised land, but you can see it from where you are. What do you say when you see what you see? Some people can only see the problems. Some people are naive, can only see the Sabbath. But from a God's eye view, Caleb said, I know what's over there. It's fortified, it's folk there, but God promised it to me and he's kept me, he's strengthened me. I've waited, I waited on him and I know this, the God who brought me here will keep me here, will deliver what he promised to me and I will work it out. Is that different than where you are? Are you complaining about every move of God? Some of it, God is prepared. You, you, you know, one of the worst places I, God forbid, well, they ain't sent me no, uh, listen. You ever go to Ikea? They got, it looks decent and cheap stuff till you get it home. Yeah. And the directions being Swedish. And it be complicated and it requires wrenches that you can't even buy in America. Y'all laughing at me on the internet? Listen, God ain't like Ikea. Come on. But some of what he brings you to, you got to put it together. Yeah. But he going to give you the tools, the directions, the instructions. Watch this. And every now and then he going to give you some help. Come on, somebody. I done threw away more Ikea stuff because I couldn't figure it out. I would, it remind me of the time I put my daughter's bike together and had parts left over. No, baby, you can't ride this one. Some of us struggle walking in destiny because you still got parts left over. What do you say when you see what you see? Caleb said, I know God is able. Songwriter said God is able to do what he said he would do. He gonna keep and provide for every promise he's made to you. What he say, don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. God is able. When I see what I see, what, what do I say? God is able. When couples come to me for counseling, they ready to kill each other. God is able. When people are making fun of what Earl Thomas and his wife are going through, God is able. 
when folk are throwing shots at the church because the churches are empty and all of this, I say God is able. Somebody throwing shots at the church and let me throw this petty, little petty in here because the laundry's here. Watch it. I said, what you talking about? And I, I deleted it. But, it, you know, once it go out, it be out. The church, and I ain't just talking about CBSR because the resume speaks for itself. But the body of Christ has been first responsive since the nation was founded. School systems in America started in the church. Hospital systems started in the church. What do you mean that the body of Christ been first responded? When your knucklehead kid is up at the school acting a fool, cussing everybody out because he learned it at your house? Don't listen to the teacher, the principal, the coach. Y'all call the pastor, the deacons to come up there. Not only to the school, but to the school board. Why? Because your kids are being suspended at a disproportionate rate than other people. Who you call with your woke self? The body of Christ has been first responders since this nation was founded. Abolished slavery, navigated through Jim Crow, civil rights, women's rights, labor rights. The body of Christ has been present and front line. Don't you disrespect God's church. We're not perfect. I dare not say that. But he has put in us purpose. What do you say when you see what you see? That a band of misfits believers, God is still able to check on old people, raise up orphans, minister to widows. Come on, somebody. God is still able. We learn from Caleb that problems bigger than me are still smaller than God. Let me say it again. Problems, mountains bigger than me are still smaller than God. Whatever's over my head is still under his feet. That's what I mean by God is able. I'm not naive to say that some, some mountains are promises, some mountains are obstacles, and sometimes I don't know the difference, but I know God does. Some, I, I can see Mount Rainier on a clear day, but I ain't finna climb it. No, I'm just going to take a picture and say, look at God. Come on. I'm not finna be on the news. You see on the news where they got to go send a helicopter, go rescue brother so-and-so on a glacier. And what's the next thing they say? And he was a professional climber. If that fool can get stuck, I, man, listen, I can't walk Beacon Hill. I ain't gonna be the one. But I can appreciate it from here. Come on, somebody. I ain't gotta climb your mountain to clap for you. Go ahead, girl. Do you, boo-boo. But I know mine. Some I need to climb. I climbed out of an obstacle of dysfunctional family. Climbed out of an obstacle of drug addiction and abuse. Climbed out of an obstacle of abandonment issues and, and insecurity. But here I am in this place where God has set me. So whatever else comes upon me, I know this. From this point, I can still see God is able. I'm trying to bless somebody today. Let me leave you. I kept you too long. Listen, some mountains are obstacles. Caleb's mountain was a promise God made to him. And he said, give me this mountain. One verse that says, give me this high place. I'll leave you with this. Caleb was confident in God, consistent in his walk, refused to cower, and his faithfulness was compensated. Now don't get me wrong, when I say compensated, God doesn't owe you anything. But he will honor your faith in him. Come on somebody. God will honor his promises. Caleb and Joshua were the only survivors of the Exodus journey. They are the last of a dying breed who dared to trust God. The blessing of his faithfulness is rewarded and it leaves a legacy of faithfulness. Not only the high place for Caleb, but the high place will be an inheritance for his children and his children's children and his children's children. Y'all don't hear me? 
Will we leave a legacy of faith and faithfulness to our children and our children's children that says God will honor his word? It is an erroneous misnomer when as a people of faith, we equate either metaphorically or analogous that the promised land of Canaan is a foreshadow of heaven. No, ma'am, no, sir. The promised land of Canaan is called promised land because it's the land that reminds you that our God will keep his promise. No matter how big the grapes in Canaan are, no matter how rich the water is, or how much mineral wealth is in the ground, it can't even pale in comparison to glory. Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, nor has it entered in the hearts of men the good things that God has in store for those that love him. No, it's a reminder that God will keep his promise. I stop by to tell you no matter what you're going through, God will keep his promise to you. He'll honor his word. He said, you shall reap if you faint not. Don't give up now. God has already spoken. You don't need a fresh word. You don't need a rhema word. Here's a rhema word, but this is just to confirm what God has already spoken, what God has already showed you, what God has already promised you. Hang on in there. Don't give up, not because I said so, but because of who God is. He's able to keep you from falling and present your fault as before his throne with exceeding joy. And if you do fall, he'll pick you up, turn you around. Place your feet back on solid ground. Yes! God is a promise keeping God. Verse 13 the Bible said Joshua blessed him. Note Canaan is not intended as a foreshadow of heaven. but It's a reminder that God is faithful. Notice it doesn't say watch this God blessed him it said Joshua did. Don't let that throw you off. Whatever God promised to you, you don't get to pick whom God chooses to deliver it to you. I'm going to let that marinate. Whatever God promised to you, God gets to choose the instrument in which he will deliver it to you. Oh, help me, somebody. So you might be at a place that you've God has given you a discernment between the mountain of obstacle and the mountain of promise, but you've been fumbling on the delivery. That's why he said, be careful how you entertain strangers. You might be entertaining angels because you don't get to pick who God chooses to use to bless you. So I guarantee that God will bless you. But you just better be receptive to it. Joshua gave Caleb Hebron. Hebron had a different name, but when he gave it to Caleb, it had a new name. Oh, you don't hear me. When God takes you from where you are to what he promised, it's a new name and a new nature. He'll label it different. You'll be different. It'll be different. It'll change you and you will change it. And I stop by to tell you, if you got a faith that don't move you, you might not have a faith at all. And if you got a faith that moves you, it, you ought to move it. Come on, somebody. What a powerful reminder. Of the, to the faithful that at such a time as this there are so many mountains before us and not all of them are obstacles some are actually inheritances some are actually nahala. God's promises are still available to us Lord help us to see and discern the difference between the inheritance and the obstacles this mountain may very be the promise of God it may not look like much but I'm reminded of another mountain on a hill outside the north way gate of Jerusalem outside Jerusalem there was an open door for every promise of God in Christ Jesus it didn't even look like much they call it Mount Calvary but it was more like a skull shaped hill on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross and this mountain at this mountain at the cross at the cross where I first saw the light at this mountain a burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now, now, I'm happy all the day. 
This mountain bought my redemption. This mountain bore my Savior's body on a cross between two thieves. This mountain. This mountain. Which was an offense to so many. God used to redeem all of humanity. And I became a newborn soul. Just as Hebron got a new name because of what God promised and how he delivered. The mountain in front of you, God wants to walk you into some things, rename some things, rechange some things. Don't give up now. Trust God. If you're here and you don't know the God I'm talking about, your first mountain is to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You may believe in God, but that don't mean nothing except you accept Christ. Shoot, I believe in, in, in the space shuttle, but I ain't going up there. The devil, that's not my call. God is real whether you believe him or not. The question is, how will you respond to the reality of God? He so loved the world that he gave his son, that, that whoever, whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The promise of God is salvation, redemption, restoration, reconciling justification with God himself through Christ Jesus. That could be you. Every other mountain will be insurmountable for you to pass, except Christ be with you. And he promised to every believer never to leave nor forsake you. If you're here, wherever you are, and you want that promise of God, you want to unpack that gift of salvation, pray with me and I'll pray with you. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I believe God loves me. I believe he sent his son. I believe as the son of God, you died to pay the price for my sins. I believe that your blood is a sufficient sacrifice for every sin in my life, past, present, and future. Forgive me, for I'm a sinner. Save me by your grace. Come into my heart, make me brand new. Show me how to live that I might live for you. The Bible said if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe it in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the power is in the resurrection. New life in the empty tomb is the promise to every believer that will confess it, profess it, and receive it. If you believe that today and you receive that today, the Bible said thou shall be what? Saved. Now the follow-up is any Christian church open in Jesus Christ's name will walk you in the follow-up. Church by the side of the road, the site you're on, shoot us an email or send us your contact. I wouldn't necessarily do it on the comments because everybody else is going to see your contact. www.cbsr.org where my ministry team, my hospitality team, my elders will follow up with you. Thou can be saved. Amen? Amen. This mountain is the promise of God. And every promise of God is a yea and amen in Christ Jesus. And all the people said, Amen. Let us prepare to commune with the Most High. Hallelujah. We're going to be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning with verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. God, we thank you for this opportunity to partake in your blood and in your body. We consecrate and set apart these elements, knowing that it has reconciliation power within it, God. We thank you for the ability to reconcile through your blood and through your body. On today, we esteem you and we glorify you in this state, God, in this brokenness that brought forth togetherness. In Jesus' name, amen.
at home who came Wednesday to receive your communion. Let us prepare to commune one with another. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, blessed it, said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take, eat all of it. And after he supped, he lifted up the cup of the new covenant. Be careful. He said, my blood, which is shed for the remission of sin, drink ye all of it. Yes, often as we eat the bread and drink the cup, we do show the Lord's death till he comes. He is coming back. I want to remind you, if you weren't able to commune with us even now live, we'll have uh, Holy Communion being served here at Church by the Side of the Road, 3455 South 148th Street, from 1230 to 130 in a drive-up fashion. So stay in your car. Uh, our team has roped out the parking lot where you can drive up. Ministers and elders will serve you and bless you as we send you on your way. And there will be also Mother's Day gifts. Amen? Is that right? Amen. Uh, amen. 1230 to 130 communion, drive up fashion. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures flow. 